us started this evening. If you're able, let's stand and take your hymnal. Hymn number 105. Rescue the perishing. 105. Rescue the perishing. Care for the dying. Snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. We pour the erring ones. Lift up the fallen. Tell them of Jesus the mighty to save. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save. Hold on a second. Though they are sliding him, still he is waiting, waiting the faith and child to receive. Plead with them earnestly, plead with them gently. He will forgive if they only believe. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save on at last. Rescue the perishing, duty demands it. Strength for the labor the Lord will provide. Back to the narrow way, patiently win them. Tell the poor wanderer a Savior has died. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save. All right, boys and girls, y'all come on up. Let's remain standing. We'll look to the Lord in prayer. Uh, I want to pray for Miss Wilma Barker. Miss Wilma is going to be having a heart calf on November the 1st. And Miss Deanna is going to be having one on November the 2nd. And Miss Pat Prothero is going to be having one coming up uh, soon. So anyway, you've got three ladies that are going to be having heart calf. So also pray for Brother Bob and the procedure that he had done. Pray that everything will go well with that. And um, also um, Margie Broach's son uh, passed away. And uh, let's see here wrote his name down, uh, Matthew, Matthew Broach. Yeah, Matthew, uh, Matthew came to our church when he was 10 years old and uh, got saved and all that. He came to Miss Parker way back uh, 20-something years ago. He's 33 years old, so that's a long time ago. He was a little boy, and, and he was real jovial, but he kind of got up and, and just really made a lot of bad choices, wrong friends, and Matthew would be the first to tell us that. I've talked to him a number of times in jail and, and all of that. But anyway, he passed away at the age of 33. And, uh, you know, that's awful young, isn't it? And I love Matthew, and, and um, I just hate that he didn't get his life turned around. I know he had health issues and all that. But pray for his mama, Margie Broach, and that God would give her grace and comfort during this time. And, and uh, I really believe Matthew got saved, but, again, I just think he just struggled in this life to do what was right, okay? A lot of his friends and stuff is just the wrong crowd, and you can't run with, can't run with skunks and not get stink on you, amen? That's the way it was, uh, uh, I had a couple skunks come by my deer stand the other night, and uh, whole kitties, amen. And uh, I was thinking, now what would happen if I, and then I thought, no, I ain't shooting one of them, sure as the world. They'd be squirting everywhere, and the whole deer would just stink to the third heaven, amen. So I just let them play and run around there, and I don't know if they scared the deer off or not, but anyway, uh, uh, I just let them be, amen. So sometimes it's just better to stay away if it's not worth it. It's not worth getting the stink on you. Somebody say amen right there. And sometimes you just have to say, no, I ain't doing that. I ain't going there. I ain't doing that. That's, I'm not doing that. You've got to take a stand. Amen. All right. Well, let's bow our heads and we'll pray. And Brother Bojack, why don't you come up here and pray for us? Appreciate Brother Bojack. Brother Bojack kind of slid in when Brother Dalton Smith moved to Texas. He'd been slid in and been doing children's church for us. And and Brother Josh and a different one's been going in there with him, but uh, he's really growing in his, in his teaching and preaching to the boys and girls next door, and I appreciate that very much. And I bless him, and I'm proud of him. He's one of the young preachers in our church, and that's how you learn, and that's how you grow. And by the way, I talked to Jake this afternoon, my youngest son, and, and uh, he calls me every Sunday, and, and uh, I said, how'd it go today? He said, Daddy, we had 78 today. Yeah, 78 today. 49, 49, 62, 63, and then today at 78, I said, what'd y'all eat for lunch? And he said, two of them Cajun men made some uh, some gumbo and jambalaya, and the ladies brought potato salad 
And uh, he said all the church provided was the bread and the ice and the drinks and cups and all of that. And I said, they go good. He said, it went real good. So next Sunday, they're having a friend day, trying to have a hundred. He said, I want you to pray, pray for me. I can figure something out on the children. Because he said, we only got 85 chairs. And he said, you put 78 people in there, and there's only seven empty spots. And it, it don't look like a whole lot of wiggle room, you know. So he said, I got to get the kids out of there and, get, you know, get somebody help with the children and all that. So you pray for him for wisdom. Isn't that a blessing? And, uh, he, and really, honestly, he hasn't even been able to go out and do anything yet he's still working on that house and he's trying to he was on his way to home depot to get some parts for a bed or something putting something together and they are um, uh, buying a lot across the street from the church where they're building those homes and they're waiting on a bigger lot they got little lots you know and then they're waiting on their number one on the list to buy one of the bigger lots you know and and so anyway they're going to buy a bigger lot and build a home right across the street from the church amen so that's a blessing and they had bought a home in malvern and had their equity in that home and i'm sure he's going to take that and use it to buy his next home with but anyway i'm proud of him and and um, um you know catholics are not used to coming to the altar i mean for a catholic it's like a baptist walking into a catholic church their church services are a lot different than ours how many of y'all know what i'm talking about you've been there and yeah it's really different and uh well they would say the same thing about ours so they don't know about coming to the altar and he's got people raising their hand and for prayer for salvation i said well that's a start right there if they'll just acknowledge that they need the lord even if they're not coming down, you know, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a real good spot, amen. When you get somebody to raise their hand that they need a Savior, I mean, that's a big piece of the puzzle right there. So anyway, uh, you just pray for them and, and uh, that, that, that God will start. And God already is moving, and they've had some saved, but there's a lot more coming that have raised their hands, amen, that, that, that need to be saved. So I know the Lord's going to do it, amen, but we can pray for them. All right, Brother Bill. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for another Sunday night service, Lord. I thank you for everything being able to go good um, this morning, Lord, and this afternoon, Lord. I pray that you would just uh, continue to bless the, the bus ministry, Lord. And, Lord, I pray that you would just uh, be with the, the, the man's family who died today, Lord. I pray, or, or recently, Lord, I pray that you would just uh, comfort them, Lord, and uh, give them uh, peace in the time of trouble, Lord, that only you can provide, Lord. Um, Lord, I pray for Brother Jake's church. Lord, I pray that you would just continue to uh, just give them that fire of a of a newborn church, Lord. And I pray that you would just uh, continue to help us here, Lord, and just continue to bless us, Lord, and just uh, fill our hearts with joy for them, Lord, and help us to um, just do what we can for you, Lord, and help us to grow every day. In your name I pray, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. We'll let boys and girls come.
I've been forgiven, Christ made a real change in me. I'm no longer crying when I think about dying, cause heaven is waiting for me. And he's always trying to lead you down the wrong way. Just call on God's name and he'll save you today. And you can look back at Satan and say, I'm not going to hell. I met the Savior, what a story I tell. I'm saved and forgiven, set free, all is well. I'm not going to hell. No. Stand 285, 285, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. On that last, what have I to dread, what have I to fear, leaning on the everlasting arms? I have blessed peace with my Lord so dear, leaning on the everlasting Secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. All right, thank you. you. May be seated. We'll have the boys and girls come. We're going to take our pocket change offering again, and uh, we've got our little funnel up here in the front. And Brother Lee's got the cups ready. And all right, that'll be a blessing. And. Oh, we got it. I got a girl tonight. Alyssa's here. That's a blessing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. All right. You hold your hand up and they'll come around and pick it up, okay? goes to our children's ministries and that'll be a blessing you hold your hand up and they'll come and get your money amen all right good job good job everybody's doing good we're breaking in some new ones amen that's a blessing that's a blessing
time, Brother Lee is our official certified funnel control man. Amen. He'll put that on his resume. All right. That's awesome. Brother Paul's in the back. Those of you who have the going with Kids of the King, y'all can head that way. Hey, Finley. They're going that way, Brother Paul. Yeah, go back there, and he'll lead y'all over, okay? All right. Praise the Lord. So how are we going to get all them dollar bills out? I don't know. Same way we got them in. We're going to figure it out. Amen. You got a dollar? Good. I'm proud of you. Praise the Lord. Coat hanger. Yeah, that'll work. All right. It's a blessing, isn't it? And you just, I mean, I'm telling you, once a quarter, it's, it's about $900. It's a lot of money that adds up, you know, all these nickel, diamonds, and quarters. And that buys a lot of diesel, whatever, you know, on the buses and all. Keep praying on that deal on getting the buses painted. That is a big, that's a big thing nowadays to get a bus painted, okay? And, and uh, we... We, uh, we're kind of famous for having the blue buses here in South Arkansas, so we want to kind of keep that going, amen, and uh, that'll be a blessing. All right, and those of you that are heading with Brother Paul, y'all head back that way, amen, they're getting all this figured out, praise the Lord. Um, is there anybody who works in the bus ministry and you didn't get one of the little bus books and you weren't here today at the bus meeting where we were eating lunch, anybody didn't get one? Okay, all right. It's a good little read on the bus ministry. Just trying to keep our bus workers in, encouraged. Welcome to the bus ministry by Joel Fugate. It's a little book that we got for our workers. And appreciate our bus workers. Amen. Is there a bus worker want to give a testimony tonight? Just want to give a testimony about the bus ministry. I love the bus kids. Amen. I do. I love them. Thank the Lord for them. Anybody, Brother Josh? Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. We're making a difference for some. Amen. That's a blessing. So, all right. Let me read you a missionary prayer letter here for uh, Luke Shelby. And uh, this is an awesome deal here. The Shelby family, family, your missionaries to Kenya, East Africa since 1997. Dear supporters and prayer partners, hello from Kenya. We pray that each of you are doing well and that your ch own church is getting back to normal and seeing souls saved, people baptized, and your church growing once again. We know the last year and a half has not been easy for any ministry anywhere around the world, but we are so thankful for the Lord's protection, faithfulness, guidance, and power that has been evident in our life and in the lives of so many Kenyans within the reach of our ministries here. God is always so good to us. A brand new church, listen to this now, a brand new church, God allowed us the ability to plant our 30th church. Wow, that's one missionary that's planted 30, church, 30 churches in, since 1997. 30th church in O-L-T-E-P-E-S-I, uh, a -E -E uh, village on the Massey tribal area near the Kenyan-Tanzanian border on August 29, 2021. We have started the church building but because of the ban on timber harvest in the area of forest, we were not able to finish it in August. We have plans to go back and finish it the beginning of November. Be sure to uh, connect with us via our blog for all the details. And they've got their blog if you want to take a look at that. And it's really awesome to see all the people there. 
Uh, a family update, our son and daughter, uh, our daughter and son-in-law, Jeremy and Brianne Martin, were able to enter Mongolia and have been there for a little over a month now. They uh, completed a two-week quarantine and have started language school in the capital of Elan Batar. It is very cold there as winter has begun. Please pray for them as they begin their life there and get accustomed to the new language and culture. A ministry milestone, South um, Nyanza Baptist College is celebrating its 20th anniversary this year. At the end of December, we will be having a celebration and graduation for 12 students. We will be having a three-day conference before the graduation with the current enrollment of 80 students along with 78 former students and 10 teachers and some of their families also attending and, lear and learning the Word of God. This will be the first big meeting that we have had in a couple of years due to the COVID-19 lockdowns and restrictions. We are hopeful that things will get back to normal with our normal conference schedule in 2022. We have lots of plans and we are praying that the Lord will intervene in getting things in our ministry back to a normal order of things that we had pre-COVID. We praise the Lord. Listen to this now. We praise the Lord that we have still had over 1,400 come to know Christ as their personal Savior so far this year. Isn't that a blessing? And mostly by our students in weekly soul winning and visitations. We want to, th uh, want to thank you so uh, many of you who have supported our family and our ministry to train these nationals for over 20 years. We're so excited about what the future holds for these graduates and the rest of the student body in the years to come. We will be transporting everyone to come uh, to the conference in Kissy. Uh, I'm not saying for sure if I'm saying that right. And we are requesting special offerings in order for this uh, day to be a special day for everyone involved. We are trying to raise 1500 between now and December uh, to help with this conference. Thank you so much for your help. For souls in Kenya, Luke and Tanya Shelby. And uh, they're sent out of Bible Baptist Church in Jacksonville, Arkansas. And Dr. Mike Files is their pastor. We love the Shelby family. But they have less than 30 churches now. 30 churches now. And uh, to God be the glory. And we're having a part in that through our missions program right here in South Arkansas. Man, I'm telling you, there's going to be a lot, a lot, a lot of Kenyans in heaven because we sent the Shelbys over there 30 years ago. And I'm just thankful that we can have a part. All right, let's sing another song. 291, 291, my Lord knows the way through the wilderness. <clears throat> my Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is follow my Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is follow strength for today is mine all the way and all that I need for tomorrow. My Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is follow. Let's have the ushers come forward and we'll receive our evening offering. If you need an offering, you'll slip your hand up and um, these fellows will get one to you. And we do also have the little faith promise deals uh, that we passed out this morning. Is there anyone that didn't get one of these this morning and you'd like one? All right. Brother Ben, did you get one or no? All right, I'll give you one of these. This is kind of a sermon outline for this morning. We're going to finish it up tonight. And uh, that's a good little tool to, uh, to put in your Bible uh, on the faith promise just to understand it, okay? And, and uh, we teach it and preach it, but we want you to have it right there where you could just get a working knowledge of it, okay? And I'd encourage you to read that and reread it and kind of study your Bible and kind of get all the scriptures and all that in your heart there in 2 Corinthians 8, 9, and 10 where, where you kind of have a working knowledge of when we say a faith promise offering, you would understand. And I, I don't assume that, that everybody understands that because uh, we really do want 100% participation and, and not everybody is probably involved in our missions program and we want everybody to be. And I think if you ever, if you ever could understand it and get it in your heart, you, you'd never want to do anything other than have a little part, you know, whatever big part, whatever God would put on your heart to do, you'd want to do that to help reach the world that Jesus Christ died for. All right, Brother Galen, why don't you step up here and pray for us and ask the Lord to bless pray. Lord, thank you for this day. pray that you would uh, be with Brother J.D. as he brings your word, dear Lord, and I pray that you would uh, keep us all safe tonight, dear Lord, and pray that you bless the offering and bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <laughs>
have your Bible there, go ahead and turn to um, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 again, and just we'll have that kind of in hand. And um, the little brochure that we handed you out this morning, if you still have that handy there, uh, this morning we kind of talked about what a faith promise offering, what is it and why should I? And uh, we said there on, on page number one that the faith promise offering is a, a free will offering collected weekly in our church to provide the finances for our worldwide missions. Missions involves the training, equipping, sending, and supporting of personnel who devote their time preaching the gospel and planting churches in the regions beyond your local church ministry. These persons are called missionaries who are sent forth by the local churches. And then the faith promise method of giving is described in detail for us in 2 Corinthians 8, 9, and 10. And number one there, we talked about that. What do we mean by a faith promise offering? And first, it's a promise to God. Second, it's an act of faith. Thirdly, it's a free will offering. Fourthly, it's a promise for one year. And then we went down the five different passages. Number two, why should I give a faith promise offering? And really the big reason is because God's commanded us to go into all the world. And uh, if God's commanded us to do it, then we should be obedient to the Lord. Amen. It's just bottom line. It's not rocket science. He's, he's given it to us over and over and over again. So we have that responsibility of giving the gospel to every creature. And we cannot do that by ourselves. And so we have to have help. Amen. That's why... To God be the glory on the good report from the Shelby family, uh, you know, and helping us reach people over there uh, where we've never been before, okay? And, man, I, I just love the whole concept, and we work together with our missionaries, and, and uh, what a great blessing it is. But we're just being obedient to the command of the Lord Jesus. And it says there in that second paragraph under number two, the only way we can be obedient to this command is by witnessing at home and sending others to witness where we cannot go. The sending of others to the regions beyond our ability to go is what we call missions. And we went down through those three things and gave you that as to why we give a missions offering, to express loving, the loving uh, uh, command, uh, obedience to the, his commands, to the Lord's command. Second, because of the example of Christ, he gave himself. And then thirdly, because of God's blessings upon us. Amen. He has been good to us, hasn't he? Amen. He, he's been real good to us. Amen. He should, could have thumped us all off into hell, but he didn't do that. And uh, I, I like that song that says, If I had a thousand lives to live, I'd live them all for my Lord. He's been so good to me. It's the least I could afford. He's made the good times out of the bad. He's been the best friend I ever had. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. Amen. He is good. He's good all the time regardless of our circumstances. God is so good. Let's sing that. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Oh, yeah, he does. He's good, isn't he? He answers prayer. Yes, he does. He's coming soon. Yes, he is. I love him so. Yes, I do. Amen. Let's sing that verse. I love him so. I love him so. I love him so. He's so good to me. Yeah, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Number three tonight, the third question we might ask is, how can I give a faith promise offering? How can I give a faith promise offering? And then, uh, again, it keeps referring to 2 Corinthians 8, 9, and 10, okay? And this just kind of gives you... Uh, the outline of, of where our missions program and the concept comes from, from the scriptures, okay? And uh, but I want you to look in 2 Corinthians 8, 5. And the Bible says here, and it says, Submit to the Lordship of Christ. It says, And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. So you would understand, uh, you know, we passed the offering tray and uh, real regular around here and take up offerings and so forth. But you know, Every once in a while, you need to get in that offering tray. Amen. You need to present your body a living sacrifice. And if God has you, then he has your pocketbook. <laughs> I mean, he has everything. 
and he don't even really, it's not even about your pocketbook, it's just about him having you, then you can uh, be in tune with him to see what he has for you to do. It's not really a problem. Whereas if you're all possessive and my house and my car and my job and I did this and, you know, we did that, and all, it's, not, it's not about y'all. You know, the biggest thing in the illustration this morning when Peyton came up here was that Peyton had nothing. He had zero to begin with. It's what he started with. And from there, everything we have is a blessing from the Lord. Anything above zero is a blessing. Somebody say amen right there. Yeah. And I'm just telling you, you know, when we start thinking that it's all about us and all that, we're getting out of, I mean, it's like, you know, we're taking that glory from God. And he don't like that. No, I'm telling you, all the honor and all the glory and all the praise. And that's why we ought to be in a spirit of humility because everything we have, God gave us. Everything. And uh, that's a blessing. If you can ever get a hold of that, it'll really just change your life, okay? And I'm real st selfish and stingy and, and, and everybody else is too. That's just kind of human nature. But we have to, we have to die that, that human nature. Now watch this. Submit to the Lordship of Christ and... Uh, it says, uh, because his, pur uh, his purchase of your life. And, and by the way, the Bible says here, this verse is given, 2 Corinthians 6, 19, 20. And ye are not your own, for ye are bought with the price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. I love the old song that says, now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me, not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. I'm always going to be his, and he's always going to be mine. I love that song that says, he is mine. I am blessed beyond all measure. He is mine. Yeah. I'm glad he's yours, but he's mine too. Amen. It's a blessing. And because of that, because he purchased me, because I've been bought with the price, that ought to create the desire for me to want to do what he wants me to do. Look at the next one, his position over you. And it gives Philippians 2, 9 through 11. You can look these verses up in your Bible. The verses are given in that little pamphlet. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him. It's talking about Jesus. And given him, Jesus, a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ <coughs> is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So he's, I mean, he's over us. He's over us. And every knee is going to bow. And every tongue is going to confess that Jesus is Lord. And man, I just like to yield to him and say, man, Jesus, I want you to be Lord over my life right now. Amen. And, and all that. And then his power, his power, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore. So he's given us his authority, his power, his authority, power to, to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, okay? And it said, Paul did this as recorded in Acts 9, 6, and he trembling and astonished said, this is on that road to Damascus, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? That's a good missions question, isn't it? Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Now, secondly, number two, and we just got this one point tonight, secondly, surrender to, uh, your will to his will. And it talks about that in 2 Corinthians 8, 3. Uh, uh, they were willing of themselves, okay? The last part of that verse, uh, they gave to their power, yea, and beyond their power. And it says they were willing. They were willing. They had that spirit of willingness to, to give back to the Lord. And they were in deep poverty and great affliction and, and all that, yet they still had that heart to give to help reach others. For if there be a willing mind, 2 Corinthians 8, 12, 12 and, and it talks about here in the, in the brochure, self-willed and self-centeredness are sinful characteristics. And that's just human nature. We have that to contend with. Carnal nature, our flesh, and wants to keep you from giving to missions. And there are a lot of carnal Christians. I mean, they wouldn't say it, but, you know, they just don't, they just don't have a heart for the world. They don't really, they don't really you know, they, they just, they, it's more about them and their earthly possessions. And once they get to heaven, they're going to realize, wow, I missed it, Lord. I missed it. I could have directed some of my money and kept some people out of hell, but I didn't do that because of my selfishness, Lord, because of me being self-centered. It'd all be about me, me being stingy. I don't want to be that way. I don't want you to be that way. Romans chapter number 6. Let's go ahead and turn over there and let's look at these verses real quick. Uh, Romans chapter number 6, and this is really good stuff here. Uh, 
And again, I'm just giving you this little outline so you could, could uh, have this for your records and keep it in your Bible, keep it wherever you keep things that are important and review and, and all that. But um, look in Romans chapter number 7. And right here, there's little one, two, three, four. It says, admit your carnality. And I'd have to raise my hand there. Verse Romans 7, uh, 7, 14. For you know that the law is spiritual. And I'd have to raise my hand right here. But I am carnal. I am carnal. What does that mean? A lot of times I'm controlled by the flesh. A lot of times I'm not controlled by the spirit. Are y'all listening to me? I'm, a lot of times I'm the one call, you know, calling the shots. And it's about me. But I am carnal, sold under sin. Look down at verse number 18. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Somebody say amen right there. Amen. There ain't nothing good about my flesh, and ain't nothing good about your flesh either. Dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. And that's the way it is sometimes. And then look down at verse number 24. O wretched man that I am. Oh, yeah. I have to raise my hand on that one too. I'm carnal. I'm carnal. Yes. And, and, and again, uh, you know, uh, in me dwelleth no good thing. Yeah, amen, I'm on that one too. Oh, wretched man that I am. And sometimes we just don't want to acknowledge, you know, that we got a problem. And uh, the problem is not on God's end, it's on our end. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? And uh, he said, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we're going to get victory, it's going to be through the Lord Jesus Christ. But anyway, admit your carnality. Number two, acknowledge your crucifixion. Look in Romans chapter 6 and verse number 6. Knowing this, that our old man, that's the old nature, is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. There's a lot of people that don't want to serve sin no more. A lot of people try and they just seem like they can't get over the hump. But you can't do it by yourself. You've got to have God to help you. You've got to have the Lord to help you, okay? Acknowledge your crucifixion. Lord, I am crucified with Christ. And wow, let, let, you know, let Him help you. Now, now look now at the next one there. Apply the cross. And this is really good. Look in Galatians 6.1. What shall we say then? Uh, <clears throat> Galatians 6. Uh, uh, or Romans 6, 1. Uh, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, okay? And uh, again, uh, likewise, you also, uh, verse number 11, there it is. Verse number 11, I think that's got a, uh, they, they've got that. Uh, put a little one on the end of that, 6, 1. That didn't sound right. If you got your notes there, make 11 out of that. If you got your little booklet there. Likewise, reckon you also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So, I mean, reckon, I mean, that's to count, to count it like you're dead, okay? Reckon uh, ye, uh, also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. Man, I'd love to be dead to bad things, you know, where I, I didn't want bad things no more in my life. Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And that's what we've got to do every day. We've got to deny ourselves. Deny ourselves and take up our cross daily and follow the Lord. Then the last one here, number four, it says, but alive unto God, appropriate the life by, by the Christ life by faith, and but, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Wow, what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. Man, I just want to live the Christ life. I want to appropriate. I want people to see Jesus in my life. And uh, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Man, I'd like for people to see him in my life. So observe it says when this becomes a reality you'll experience and then turn to Philippians 2.13. Let's look at this one here real quick. Philippians chapter 2, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians chapter 2 and I know you have it written out for you right there but I want you to look at it in your Bible. Philippians 2.13 and the Bible says for it is God Philippians 2.13, it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Not my good pleasure, but his good pleasure, okay? And again, what a blessing, okay? What a blessing that when I'll admit my carnality, acknowledge that I'm going to, you know, the, the, my crucifixion through the Lord and apply the cross and appropriate the faith of Christ. And, and then, I mean, God can begin to work in my life and work through me and... Uh, 
what a blessing, amen, is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. That's a good place to be with the Lord. Then thirdly, uh, settle the amount He wants you to give. Now this, this verse here is back in, uh, back in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9. Let's turn back over there real quick. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse number 7. The Bible says, Every man, every man. How many men? Every man. Every man, okay? Everybody. That's everybody. Every man, woman, boy, and girl. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver, okay? So again, as we begin to let God work in us and through us and both the will and do of His good pleasure, then, you know, this thing of giving, uh, you know, we just begin to pray and, and uh, we ask God with a submissive will. And you see that question there, how can I determine what God wants me to give to missions? Well, you ask God with a submissive uh, spirit, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? It's a good question, and if you're truly willing to do His will, He's going to impress upon your mind, upon your heart, the amount that He wants you to give, okay? The amount He indicates may be beyond your personal ability, but remember the verse, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth, Mark 9, 23. Then fourthly, subscribe to that amount on your faith promise card. And most of you know that we, we pass out the faith promise cards uh, every year at our missions conference. We fill it out. We, we tear it apart where it's perforated, and, and we make our commitments in April every year. And again, uh, we just give what, what we promised all year long. We do it for it's a one-year commitment, okay, to the Lord. But uh, that's all determined by faith, and we pray and ask the Lord what He would have us to, di to do. And then uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 5. Look at your Bible there, 2 Corinthians 9, 5. Therefore... I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would be, go before unto you and make up beforehand your bounty whereof uh, you had noticed before that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as of covetousness. And so Paul the missionary uh, would send workers there to Corinth and, and uh, to make up before his coming the bounty. They would take up the offering before he got there and, and the blessings and have that to take and disperse where the needs were at. And it says there in 2 Corinthians uh, 8, 16 through 9, 5 sets a biblical example for an annual church missions conference. And you can read those verses. And, and I, I like to read and kind of, you know, get things in my mind and my heart and, and how that the Lord would want things to be, be done, okay? And it is a blessing to understand that, okay? So I'm going to let you kind of study that out. Number five, set this amount aside uh, weekly and give it. So that there be no, uh, performance also out of that which you have and uh, 2 Corinthians 8.11. Now knowing that it's God's will for you to give this amount weekly, then it's just simply a matter of, of good stewardship, okay? To give as God has led you to promise, okay? And God never commands us to do something He'll not enable us to do. And God, this is what I want you to look at very, very quickly. God employs many ways to provide the money He leads us to promise for world missions. Number one, He's able to increase your supply. Increase your supply. There was a lady, I was preaching for Terry Terry uh, in uh, Paradise, Texas, which is outside of Boyd, Texas, which is outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And just a little small country church. And this lady had lost her job. She had no job. And it was missions conference time. And she was praying, Lord, what do you want me to get? I don't even have a job. And God put an amount on her heart. She had no earthly idea how God was going to supply what he put on her heart to promise. But she knew that's what he wanted her to do. And she wrote it down. And guess what? God gave her a job that was making more money than the job that she lost. And she was so excited. And it more than made up the difference on what she'd committed to give to the Lord. Are you listening? What is that? That's given by faith. That is giving by faith. She was so excited. I was excited. That's a great story. Why? Because God can increase your supply. Number two, this is a good one right here. God can decrease your spending. Do you know that Americans, listen to me, it's really sad, but there's all kinds of research and stuff like that. Uh, but you know that, that Americans spend more on dog food than we do on missions. Do you know that we spend, Americans spend more on chewing gum? I mean, y'all, something's not right somewhere. 
You know what I'm saying? I mean, in God we trust, and we're a Christian nation, all that. But I'm telling you, when you spend more on your dog and, and more on chewing gum than we do on worldwide evangelization, something's bad out of whack somewhere. Are y'all listening to me? I, I'm not scolding you because probably most of you are the ones that are do, we're the ones that are doing the giving, amen? But I'm just saying that, you know, that's how far out of whack our, our, our country is, okay? And, and, and a lot of people don't even have a clue what we would be talking about tonight. There's kind of a language that you learn. And a deputation, you know, as a missionary trying to get to the field. Furloughs when they come back, you know, to rest a little bit after maybe as many as four years on the mission field. And we understand those terminologies just from being around missions for a long time. You learn things that you didn't know before. So number one, increase your spot. Number two, decrease your spending. And, and boy, I'll tell you, boy, we could really hone in a little bit on that one. You know, in our church, uh, and, and again, you know, we've got all kinds of examples that, you know, and y'all have heard me give them over the years, but we had a little lady that she used to sit with Brother Corley's mama, Miss, Miss Winnie Bell Kegley, and Miss Winnie Bell was a good lady. I love Miss Winnie Bell. She's a great cook, and she loved the Lord. She would even travel with our ball teams and go on trips and all. She lived over in Norfolk there uh, by the corner of one stop and in a trailer there, and we've ate at her home with Bob, Miss Lydia, me and Miss Deanna and our family, and and uh, we love Miss Winnie Bell. But Miss Winnie Bell, one year, she's on a fixed income. And Miss Winnie Bell, God put on her heart one year to give up her cable vision. Huh. She took the amount that she would spend on cable vision. And she gave that money to missions. And, you know, James Kegley's her son. And she got, you know, uh, LV and, and her daughters, you know. And they got some means, you know. And they said, well, Mama, we'll take care of your cable vision. She said, no, you will not. That defeats the whole purpose of it. She said, I'm giving up my cable vision to give that money to missions because I love missionaries and God put on my heart to do that. She said, it ain't going to hurt me one bit to do without my cable vision for a year because God told me, hey, listen, I wonder how many people will be in heaven because Winnie Bell Kegley, on a fixed income, a little widow woman, gave up her cable vision because Jesus put it on her heart. To help. She didn't have a lot of money, she didn't have, but, but God put it on her heart. She did what she could. That is a blessing, y'all. That's a blessing. There was a little lady who used to wheel her in here on her oxygen bottle. Her name was Maddie Reeves. Miss Maddie worked for the school for the blind, and she would wheel in here and park her oxygen bottle and sit here on about the second row. And we moved Miss Maddie. She had trouble getting settled. Uh, you know, she was in a little rock, and we moved her down here, and she had cats. You know, and man, I, you know, I'd go over and see her, and my eyes would water, and my nose would run. And she had cats everywhere. I mean, she was just like cats, cats, cats. And, and, you know, she was up in years, and we moved her from, from Little Rock to El Dorado, El Dorado to Strong, back to, Little, back to El Dorado, and then up to Little Rock. And, well, anyway, one of those moves, she had made a faith promise missions commitment, you know, and Miss Peggy and I, we checked the mail, and, and, and I, I saw, I don't really know who gives what, but I saw that she had mailed in $8, $8 for a month. It was $2 a week that she was giving the mission. And she wound up moving back here from Little Rock for the second or third time. And, and I was by there visiting her one day, and I said, Miss Maddie, I, I want to thank you for giving your missions offering. When you moved away to Little Rock, you continue to mail your missions offering in. And she has a strong personality. She's in her 80s. And she said, let me tell you something. And I was like, oh, boy. Let me tell you something. She said, I didn't make that commitment to you. And I didn't make that commitment to the church. She said, when I made my commitment, I made it to God. And I wasn't about to not do what I told God I was going to do. And I said, praise the Lord, Miss Maddie. That's awesome, you know, and I just let it be. Man, that was good. But I was proud of her that she fulfilled her commitment, even though she moved to another place. She kept sending her, you know, until she fulfilled that year because it was a one-year commitment, and she understood that. And I'm just telling you, I had somebody one time, they said, well, preacher, you know, what does it cost? I mean, I, I want to have my very own missionary, and, and, you know, I want to give the dollar amount to support such and such missionary. I said, well, you give the dollar amount, and we put it all together, but you can just know in your heart that your money's going to support that particular missionary. You know, and that's just kind of the way it is, you know, and people, some people give designated offerings and all that, and that's fine. If you designate it to them, then we send it to them. But, you know, just if you just want to do it through the church, you know, as a rule, we just we put all the money together and then it all gets dispersed every month. That's just how it's always been. But everybody gets a check every month. Isn't that a blessing? I feel closer to some missionaries than I do other missionaries. Miss Debbie DeRay to the deaf, she's texting me this past week and she had some health issues and, and they did some, some procedures, epidurals or something in her, in her, in her back or, or whatever and, and uh, she was just praying that she could get back to some sort of normalcy of life and 
I love Miss Debbie, and that's a blessing. You know, so you get closer to some than maybe you are to others, but, but what a blessing that we can have a part. How? By decreasing our spending. Wow. Uh, and then, number three, you give wisdom to be good stewards. Just to be a good steward, amen, of what God has entrusted you with. To be a good steward. And, uh, and then number four, to give grace to sacrifice. And you can look up these verses, but God can give us grace just to sacrifice, like Miss Winnie Bell, to do without something. You know, to maybe be a blessing to the, the missionary. And then to, God can perform the supernatural. And uh, the supernatural. I, I was at this missions conference the other day in, in, uh, in Greenbrier, Arkansas, and they have every night, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I go and preach Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Brother Danny, Ch uh, Danny Allen's uh, ministry there, and, and they've been through a lot with their church had burned down, and they were meeting somewhere else, and, and then COVID, I mean, they've been through a lot. They had 80-something in their Christian school, now they probably got about maybe 50, maybe 40 in the high 40s, so it's kind of cut their Christian school in half, you know, people sent their kids other places, and then, you know, when they got everything built back, I mean, people had already done other things, and so it's really affected their ministry, but anyway, so I go in to preach their first missions conference since COVID and all this stuff, well, anyway, um, they want, you know, the missionaries, they present, they bring the missionaries up on the platform. Some of the men, men in the church come forward and they lay hands on the missionary. They pray over them right there in front of the church and they take them off for support. They give them a love offering and they, you know, shower them with gifts and all different missionary each night. And that takes about 30 minutes, all the preliminaries, watching the video presentation. And then I'll preach for about 30 minutes and then they eat. Uh, a meal each night after church, you know, and each night they one night's Mexican food, one night's you know this, and one night's that. Well, well, anyway, I'm sitting there on Friday night <clears throat> here just a few weeks ago in September. I'm sitting there on a Friday night, and Brother Toby Bain comes over, and I've told the story here recently, but Brother Toby came over from Hope, and he had a death in the family, and his brother is attending the church there in Greenbrier, so he's got a funeral. But my preacher friend, his his brother, and I'm introduced to all the family and making all the connections. Well, they're the ones that told me. That last year in December, their 10-year-old daughter, she was sitting right there at the end of the table, that she, that God put it on that 10-year-old daughter's heart to give $1,000 to a missionary. And the mama said, honey, it's only four weeks till Christmas. Why don't you give $100? And that little 10-year-old girl said, mama, God told me to give $1,000. And she was pretty strong on what the little girl was. Well, they started baking items baked goods and some store in 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 hope arkansas began to buy i think it's 40 of these super duper cupcakes i told you about that with all the chocolate and i don't know it's like they paid her five dollars for a cup i mean it's that be on steroids for somebody to pay that much money for one but they were giving her so much money and she raised that girl that little girl raised fourteen hundred dollars in four weeks fourteen hundred dollars she made just baking stuff baking 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 but she did what god put on her heart she found a way to do, and God did the supernatural. The mama was trying to guide her because she just thought the, there was no way. But let's start with a hundred, honey. There's no way. There's only four weeks till Christmas. But God did the supernatural. And God did what even mama couldn't envision happening. And God did that. And the daddy said, we was real proud of our daughter. And she's sitting right there. He said, but our little son, he... He wanted to give to missions too, and his grandpa gave him a cow, and that cow had a calf, and we took that calf to the market, and it brought seven hundred and something dollars, and he gave that to missions. That little boy did. That kind of stuff, man, that'll mess you up. That stuff messes with me when little kids start doing stuff like that, and God starts moving, doing supernatural things that ain't normal. And it makes me want to at least try to, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? You know. Yeah. Man, God can do it, y'all. God will give through us what he won't give to us. Wow. When your interest involves world evangelization, you can count on God's blessings. By faith, claim these promises given in the mission's context. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. 
But my God, Philippians 4.19, shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Wow, be faithful and give your offering for missions through your church every week. Yeah. It's amazing what you can do if you set your mind to it. It's amazing what you it's amazing how much extra money you can come up with if you set your mind to it. It really is, y'all. It's amazing how little you can get by on if you set your mind to it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Pinto beans and cornbread sounds pretty good, don't it? How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? A one dish meal? Not bad. Oh yeah. I talked to Dylan. Dylan some and, and of course he's a single guy in Bible college and back before his marriage. Oh yeah, just eating some ramen noodles. No wonder he's so skinny. Yeah, just 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 eating a little little bit here and a little bit there. You can save a ton of money that way. Yeah. Let's pray. Father, we love you tonight. We sure do. And Lord, I thank you for the heart that our church has for worldwide evangelization. Lord, I not only thank you, Lord, for what you're doing here to us and through us, but Lord, we thank you for using our influence, Lord, uh, using our church to be a pattern and a help and instructing other churches, young churches, Lord, to be able to have a missions program and to, excuse me, to understand and what it's all about and to get a hold of the concept of giving to missions, Lord. And thank you for enabling us to be used by you to teach and preach on missions, Lord, in other places and how those churches have gotten a hold of it, Lord. And, and many of them are doing it exceptionally well in the area of, of faith promise missions giving, Lord. And we thank you for allowing us to have a part. We give you all the glory in the church tonight. And Lord, I, I saw the hands this morning go up, Lord, of those maybe who've kind of been waning a little bit, Lord, and hadn't been really maybe hitting on all cylinders in the area of their missions giving. And Lord, maybe some are just now getting on board and getting a better understanding of why we even have a missions program and, and what it is and and, and why we should give, and then how to give, Lord. Thank you for this uh, little pamphlet, Lord, how informative and instructive it is, and help us to take it to heart now. Bless these messages to our hearts today. I pray as a result of us getting a hold of these, Lord, things that, that souls will be in heaven because we gave more and not less. Bless the invitation now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand to our, our feet. Miss Deanne is going to play softly. And I don't know where your heart's at on missions, but it would be a good time. Maybe just say, wow, Lord, I pray you'd put some... I pray you'd stoke my heart for missions, Lord. Don't ever let my heart get cold or hard toward people in other parts of the world that don't have the chance. And don't let my heart get hard toward the little bus kids that wouldn't have a chance if we don't go out and find them and tell them about Jesus. Amen. It makes a difference, y'all. We're making a difference. We're making a difference in Kenya, East Africa, with our missionary, Luke Shelby. 30 churches started. Amen. That is a blessing. That is a blessing. It's just one missionary, one country, the other side of the world. I don't even know exactly where Kenya is. I know Africa's a long way from South Arkansas, though. It's a long ways from here. I watched Luke Shelby grow up at Bible Baptist Church in Jacksonville, Arkansas. Taught him in Bible college, him and his wife. Her dad's one of the directors for Rock of Ages Prison Ministry. Remember when they, they were single, both single Bible college students, and, and God brought them together. Now all these years they've been in Kenya serving the Lord and starting churches, Bible college over there. And to God be the glory, great things he had done. It's a blessing to have a little part. It's a blessing, man. It's a blessing to have a big part, really. They couldn't do what they do without our, without our prayers, without our finances telling you they need us and we need them what a blessing uh, only trust him we do have some people out of town I mentioned my sister Debbie this morning Steve um, one of the churches that they went